you're gonna break in two. Talking Boxing with Billy C. It began as a podcast, went live on the net, and transformed into a full-blown empire across the web, on Fight Now TV, and on radio stations around the world. It's the only daily boxing talk radio show on the planet, hosted by the only guy with the balls to do it. Many have stepped into the ring. Many have tried to take the belt. And one by one, they fall. Another victim of the undisputed heavyweight champion of Boxing Talk Radio. Talking Boxing with Billy C is on now. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. And we're coming to you live from the Billy C. Studio in Lake George, New York. I'm Bill Calagione. It's time for Talking Boxing with Billy C. Good morning, good day, good evening, whenever you're listening. Hope you're doing all right. Busy show scheduled for today. First and foremost, this show is being brought to you in part by Cats Nationwide Luxury Transportation Service. If you're looking for a limo and you're someplace in the United States or even Canada, you need to give my girl Cat a call, 202-351-7496. Looking for a limo with a hot driver, Cat's Nationwide Luxury Transportation Service is the limo service for you. Give her a call, 202-351-7496. Tell her Billy C. sent you. But remember, she's my girl, 202-351-7496. The show is also being brought to you in part by Camp and Aaron Tomkovich. If you're looking for a lawyer... Use the ones that keep my ass out of trouble. That is Camp and Aaron Tomkovich, 845-221-4099. Let Camp and Aaron Tomkovich knock out your legal problem. 845-221-4099. Tell him Billy C. sent you and that I'm going to pick up the consultation fee. 845-221-4099. Show is also being brought, brought to you in part by my friends over at the Halftime Bar and Grill, Route 9, South Glens Falls. If you're looking for a place that's got uh, great food, great people, drink specials, and live entertainment all the time, well, look no further than the halftime. 518-792-4869. Live entertainment Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So check it out. Uh, and by the way, if you like uh, hot sauce on your wings, make sure you try the Billy C. Hot Sauce. That's right. We got our own hot sauce over there. The only thing is you got to make sure Craig makes it. He's the only one that knows the recipe. 518-792-4869, Halftime Bar and Grill. The show is also being brought to you in part by the Whitehall Athletic Club. 
Check them out, www.whitehallathleticclub.com, or give them a call, 518-832-3663. Tell them Billy C. sent you, and don't forget about the big event. Uh, August 24th, World Championship fight, uh, Chevelle Halbach against Victoria Cisneros. Uh, all you got to do there is uh, get some tickets. That's right. 518-832-3663. And the show is being brought to you in part by Ringside, the best in boxing equipment. Check them out at ringside.com. Make sure you tell them Billy C. sent you. And uh, we got some uh, news about uh, some specials they got going on, which I'll get to a little later in the show. Um, we got Marty Mulcahy. Uh, coming on in a little bit, and uh, we'll uh, we'll be talking to him about uh, the slow schedule from last week and uh, what's going on this week. We've got some news. Uh, I got an update on the uh, the bite incident. You know, if you guys haven't checked out the fight or the bite, the bite fight, uh, check it out www.billycboxing.com, right on the front page. And uh, as it moves down, because we uh, update that page frequently. Uh, all you got to do is click the banner that says Wednesday Night Fights. It's going to be up there for for a while anyway. But uh, anywho, um, listen, this week we kicked off the Billy C. Challenge. It, we, we started to do it last week, and I forgot. I know, I know. Must have been uh, too much fun in the early days, <sighs> you know. But uh, anyway, this week. Uh, now, all the fights have been entered into the database, but... We have a couple of issues. So here's what we got to do. You got to email me your picks, all right? You got to email me your picks and tell me you're involved in the challenge. And when you email them to me, I'll have your email address and I'll sign you up. uh, And I'll put the picks in the system for you. Uh, The email will be the proof and the timestamp and all that stuff. And then I'll register your email address so that the following week you'll automatically get the updates of all the fights that... uh, uh, are going to be uh, are going to be out. So as soon as they get posted, you'll get an email showing you the fights. Then you go and you log on, and uh, you make your picks. All right. So email me, uh, Billy at talking t a l k i n boxing b o x i n g dot com. We got six fights this week uh, that we'll be breaking down a little later. I'll give them to you now, um, and then uh, I'll give you time to uh, uh, you know think about your picks and then email them to me. I know today is uh, most of them are, are today. Well, half of them are today. We've got the uh, Friday Night Fights. We're going to do the co-main event, which is uh, uh, Dionzio Miranda against Donovan George. We're going to do the main event, which is Carlos Molina against Damian Freyas. Uh, then on the Telefutura Network, we got the Cohen main event there, too. The co-main event is Rancis Bartholomew against Alejandro Rodriguez. Uh, the main event is uh, Brendis Prescott against Francisco Gato Frigueroa. Um, and then we have two other fights. We're doing the Juan Carlos Salgado, uh, Jonathan Barrios fight, which is uh, on Saturday night. And then tonight for the WBF welterweight title, Jose Emilio Pera against Jose Lopez. So those are the six fights we're doing today. And uh, I'll be breaking those down a little later. So uh, make your picks. Get involved. Prizes for everyone. Prizes for everyone. We got the speaking of prizes. We got the uh, poll question up. Uh, it, it's kind of a, a good one, man, and it's deadlocked right now. Fifty fifty, fifty fifty. You know, so go cast your vote. BillyCBoxing dot com. Uh, the question is, you know, everybody knows that uh, uh, Vladimir Klitschko is the. Uh, you know, we always talk about the Klitschkos as as two of them, but uh, Vlad is uh, uh, the main heavyweight champion. And um, the poll question is, is he going to lose the title in the ring within the next two years, or is he going to give it up at his own leisure in the next couple of years? Uh, so uh, so go cast your vote right now, 50-50. Half, half of you think that uh, he's going to lose it, and half of you say he keeps it as long as he wants and gives it up. So, um, Don't forget, next week we got uh, Tyson Fury coming on the show. So I'm excited about that. I like Tyson. He's uh, uh, he's a he's a decent young uh, fighter. He's only 24 years old, you know. So uh, uh, anyway, give a shout out to uh, uh, we got uh, a couple people in the chat room. Usually on Fridays it's slow, but uh, uh, my girl Kaylee is in there, and uh, my man OK Cool, the rich guy from uh, California, 
But uh, anyway, we're going to uh, read a couple of emails. Um, and uh, actually, the mailbag is kind of empty today. Uh, it's only, uh, I only got two. I only got two, so. Um, Hawk, my man Hawk says, Peterson, with a capital P-E-D, get it, huh? As in performance-enhancing drugs? Yeah, I got it, I got it. He says, Peterson cheated, and the IBF said it was cool. Uh, boxing is corrupt as hell. It's like they pick and choose who can use PEDs and who can't. Lamont Peterson was uh, micro-doping. He thought he could use that amount of roids and fly under the radar. His stupid ass would be claiming he was 100% clean if he wasn't busted. He wasn't forthright about anything. I think many UFC fighters are allowed to dope with a doctor's excuse. It seems the IBF has made boxing go in the same direction. Um, yeah, well, you know, cheaters are cheaters are cheaters. You know, and, um, I, you know, I, that seems to be the general consensus with everybody, uh, Hawk. Um, you know, they're, they're blaming uh, the IBF for uh, turning, the, turning around, turning around, you know, closing their eyes, whatever, however you want to do it. Uh, people believe that uh, Peterson wa was juicing before. Uh, a lot of you guys are apparently are well more versed uh, on uh, performance enhancing drugs than me and uh, what, uh, what it's about. And uh, some interesting stuff about, uh, um, you know, the sign of a guy. Uh, with low testosterone is a guy that's already taken steroids for other things, you know, so um, especially a guy his age, you know, um, so uh, yeah, well, you know, and, and I've heard a lot about the UFC uh, fighters uh, doing it as well. You know, the funny thing about Lamont Peterson is that he had requested, you know, from, what, from the, one of the latest uh, findings was that he had requested uh, the uh, the random testing, you know, so, uh, like uh, Hawk says, you know, if he was that stupid that he really thought that he, you know, was beating the system. You know, a lot of criminals do that, right? You know, they say, uh, uh, you know, all the expert criminals, you can find them all in jail, which, you know, basically means they're not really experts, right? They got busted, you know. Or, or the other thing you find in jail is all the innocent people. Or, I, I didn't do it, <laughs> you know. But uh, anyway, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. This whole uh, this whole thing uh, was a little crazy. I, and the IBF, you know, let, let's get it straight. You know, the IBF, uh, uh, you know, obviously, in my opinion, uh, I guess we got to drop them down, right? You know, we got uh, the the top five right now, uh, the WBO, the IBO. You know, uh, do we do we have to move? Uh, uh, I mean, you got the IBF, the WBC, WBA. You know, do we move the WBA up? one i mean uh uh you know do we move the wbc up one I, I don't know i mean off the top of my head i i guess i gotta go wbc you know i gotta go wbo w ibo wbc ibf and wba is down at the bottom you know so those are my top five and number six is the wbf but I, maybe these guys are uh helping the wbf get uh uh in there a little quicker you know who knows but uh anyway We'll have to wait and see on that. I got one more email, and uh, I got some, uh, uh, I actually got some um, uh, top, uh, all-time great top 10 uh, middleweights that we're going to read, and I had said that I was going to uh, um, read your mind uh, today as well, so uh, uh, we'll see if we have time to do that. I may have to stretch that out to Monday, because, you know, I, I love the middleweight division, and I wish, uh, you know, all you guys could take some time and uh, send them to me uh, so we have them, you know, so... Uh, uh, we'll have to uh, wait and see how many more people. We got a few more that came in yesterday, so maybe we stretch that out a couple of more days. Thanks to Murph. If you're in upstate New York and you need a trucking company, then you need Roselli Enterprises. Roselli Enterprises is trucking at its finest. They have it all. Dump trucks, dump trailers, walking floors, flatbeds, flow boys, tankers, loaders, and a full line of roll-off containers for any job, big or small. Roselli Enterprises is also the source for all your sand, gravel, and topsoil needs. Visit them on the web at RoselliTrucking.com or call 315-433-5115. That's 315-433-5115 and tell them Billy C sent you. Are you ready, America? Then let's get it on with Fight Now TV. It's time, fight fans. Your channel has arrived. All the fights, all the names, all the action. From world-class boxing events to mixed martial arts showdowns and other combat sports matchups, Fight Now TV delivers the hits and more. 
Call your television provider and tell them you want to get it on with Fight Now TV. For more details, go to FightNow.com. We've got a great matchup tonight. Fighting out of the left corner is the number one ranked contender. No, he is not. I'm sorry, but who are you? I am the ideal computer. I am programmed to provide only fair and unbiased boxing rankings. This fighter is the number 15 ranked contender. Fair and unbiased boxing rankings? That's a new concept. Actually, it is not. The IBO has provided unbiased computerized rankings for many years. Well, we've still got a great fight tonight, folks. In the left corner is the number 15 ranked contender. The IBO, the champion of integrity. Learn more at IBOboxing.com. Check out BillyCBoxing.com now, or feel the wrath of the mighty mustache. Oh, that hurts. Why are you doing that to my face? I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> That's BillyCBoxing.com. Consider this your warning. As a young boy, all Billy C. dreamed about was one day having his own catchphrase and we're back and we're back one boy one dream one day everyone will say and we're back 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 catchphrase coming soon to a theater near you And we're back. You are listening to the Talking Box on Billy C Show. You're watching a replay on LDL TV. Glad you could join us. And for all you YouTubers. And of course all the live listeners and viewers from around the globe. Glad you could join us. Um, we're doing uh, some uh, emails out of the mailbag. We're going to have Marty Mulcahy up here in a little bit. Uh, we'll, uh, you know, do our traditional uh, call Marty and then, you know, have a bad connection. And then Marty will have to call us back. And, you know, uh, you know that, that whole rigmarole we do uh, every single uh, week. And uh, I also got some news I wanted to get into about uh, Giorgos Bartholomew. Um, and I'll get to that as soon as I read this last email. Um, and this one's from uh, Manophonics. Says, uh, B-Hop was a con man. There you go. Yeah, this is my, I knew I liked this guy. Uh, he says uh, he had a clear path at 60 because Roy left him, and that means a 160 for you uh, uh, people that didn't get it, <laughs> which I'm sure you all did. Uh, he had a clear path at 60 because Roy left the division. His best wins were against guys who moved up, like Trinidad, uh, Winky Wright, De La Hoya, et cetera. Good point. Uh, he says, I don't give him much credit for his wins against Pavlik or Tarver either. Now, you see, I give him a lot of credit for the wins he's done in the latter part of his career only because of that. So, I, and, I, and, you know, the thing about uh, B-Hop is, you know, I, I, a lot of people get on my case about B-Hop because I don't like him. But I never said he wasn't uh, an all-time great. I just don't believe he's in the top ten. You know, uh, top ten. I mean, come on. You know, uh, he says uh, they both had problems getting into those fights, going into those fights. Uh, a clever, dirty, self-propagandist. Uh, uh, yes, all-time great. No. Um, yeah, you know, he is clever. He's a little dirty. You know, he, he, he's, he's definitely a, a guy that uh, I think he's, uh, uh, you know, he's slick. He's a slick fighter. He learned the tricks. He, he's a, tr you know, he's a true professional fighter. Like, uh, the uh, what he... He's the closest thing to a throwback, really, that we have. He is a throwback. He's not even close. He is a throwback because he, he does subtle things. You know, you never really land a punch flush on, on, uh, on uh, B-Hop. You know, he, uh, uh, he, he knows how to aggravate you and get you out of your game, you know, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, and defensively he's slick. You know, like I said, you never, you never really land a punch on him flush. But um, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think he's an all-time great, not top 10. Not top 10, but uh, well, thanks for the email, Man Ophonics. And uh, speaking of top 10, we got a couple of more uh, that uh, I wanted to uh, read. Uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, my man Biggerback. You know, now I asked him. I said, hey, come on, man, put your money where your mouth is. Let me know your top 10 all-time 
And he did. He did. So uh, uh, I want to thank him for giving us his top ten. And uh, here we go. We got uh, uh, this is Biggerback's top ten all-time great middleweights. Uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, number one. Marvelous Marvin Hagler, number two. Uh, Bernard Hopkins, he's got it number three. I knew it was going to be in the top five with, with bigger back. He's, you know, he gets mad at me every time I say something negative about b Hop. Carlos Monzon, number four. Dick Tiger, number five. Gene Fulmer, which is a good one because uh, he's in my top ten, uh, at number six. Uh, the Raging Bull, Jake LaMotta at number seven. Here's a, here's a, a, a strange one. Uh, it's, I mean, it's a good pick. It's just, again, all-time top ten. He's got Luis Manuel Rodriguez in here. Um, number nine, he's he's got a tie at number nine. How do you guys tie? I mean, uh, Murphy did the same thing. I mean, how do you tie somebody uh, in the top ten? You know, I mean, it, it's all it's all based on uh, uh, you know dream anyway. You know, but uh, you know your dream uh, top ten favorites. You know, but at number nine, he's got a tie: Nino Benvenuti and Emil Griffith. You know, Emil Griffith, a lot of you guys have Emil Griffith in your top ten all-time great middleweights, but I, I look at him as really a, a junior middleweight. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, he's an all-time great junior middleweight. I, you know, but uh, anyway. Georgie Benton, number ten. You know, Georgie Benton uh, was uh, uh, was a guy that uh, uh, was, a, was a good uh, fighter, and he went on to become a very good a trainer. Uh, but top ten all time, never won a world title, you know. But uh, anyway, and he says uh, guys, uh, uh, both uh, Roy Jones and James Tony, and also Tommy Hearn spend very little time at middleweight, so stop putting them on your top five. I never said they were in my top five. Never once said that. And by the way, James Tony spent a lot of time at middleweight. You know, Tommy Hearns, nah, not so much. Roy Jones. Roy Jones moved up from middleweight, man. He started out at middleweight. You know, so, I, you know, you're a little off there, my man. But uh, I don't have him in my top five. I don't have him in my top five. But uh, uh, bigger back, that's his top ten. So, uh, and while we're at it, uh, we got uh, my man, guess what? Given quality, man. Given quality, he's got his top uh, ten. He's also got a, a mail bag uh, with... Uh, uh, with uh, uh, me, I guess he's. Uh, he says, "Shame on you for Ward at number six and Donair at number five. He shouldn't even be on the list. I don't see Cotto uh, number two. Fight happening versus uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. He says, "I don't see Cotto two fight happening with Floyd Mayweather and Jr. Uh, in December. I still think he'll pass on fighting him uh, and pass on fighting again this year and wait until uh, uh, next year." Um. Good point. I. You know, and I guess you're talking about, uh, uh, I guess you're talking about the uh, um, pound for pound, right? Is that what we have? Is that what we have uh, in our pound for pound? Um, I said that Andre Ward should be number five. I said Andre Ward is number five. So what are you talking about? The, our picks on, on the website are, number, are, are the other way around, but that's our panel. That's not me. I have notes right there. I, I put it, I read it, wrote it, I've written it right down. <laughs> I wrote it right down. I said, uh, you know, I think that uh, Ward is above Nonito Donaire. I said that. Go back and listen to the show, man. I was on your side, man. You know, guys like him quality. He don't want me to be on his side. You know, unless I get the, the Floyd Mayweather Jr. underwear and pajamas, you know, I mean, uh, you know, he, he don't want to hear nothing from me. Anyway, I agree with you. I think Ward is above Donaire and pound for pound. Yes, I do. Given Quality's top 10 all-time greats. He says uh, he doesn't have a top 10. He's got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. He says, uh, that's all I can come up with. He says, all, that's all I can come up with, my top six. He says, guys from the late 1800s and early nine, 1900s can't determine. He says he can't determine without footage. Carlos Monzon, Harry Grubb, Freddie Steele, Stanley Ketchell, etc. Carlos Monzon was from the 60s and 70s. There's plenty of footage uh, on him. And actually, uh, the, uh, um, Stanley Ketchell did some footage of him. He fought, uh, he fought Jack Johnson. Uh, the guy that there's no footage on is, uh, is Harry Greb. You know, but uh, Freddie Steele, that's a good one. That's a good one to throw in there. 
But, uh, you know, I, I think Carlos Mazzone, you, you can find lots of footage on him. And, uh, you know, if you, if you think Marvelous Marvin's in your top ten, which he's got, he's got number one Sugar Ray. Now, I'm assuming it's Sugar Ray Robinson, you know, uh, because Sugar Ray Leonard fought at middleweight as well. I'm surprised nobody put Sugar Ray uh, Leonard in their uh, all-time great top ten. I guess everyone looks at him as a, as a middleweight, uh, welterweight. Uh, number two, given quality, he's got Marvelous Marvin. Number three, he's got Jones Jr., Roy Jones Jr. Um, you know, you got to recognize Roy Jones Jr. as a great middleweight. You have to. You know, and, 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 you, and you're right to think that, you know, whoever said it before about, uh, what was it, Manophonic said uh, uh, about Bernard Hopkins. You know, remember, Roy Jones left the division when, and then Bernard went on those uh, 20, uh, 20 defenses. So, Roy Jones Jr., number three for uh, given quality. Number four, Tommy the Hitman. Yeah, you know, he he might deserve to be in the all time great top ten. You know, Bernard Hopkins he's got at number five. James Tony at number six. Not a bad list for giving quality for the new guys, for the new kids on the block. You know, that's the way uh you know, they should start a band with that name, no. But uh, uh that, that's what he's got. You know, but uh I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, uh as far as I'm concerned, you know, we got uh, there's some guys. You guys, uh, I think there's a lot of fighters you're leaving out of the uh, uh, out of the mix. You know, especially guys like uh, you know the old time guys um, that you have to include, um, like non-parallel Jack Dempsey. This was a guy that uh, no one could beat. <laughs> no one. The only time, the only reason why he's got one loss is because he was like uh, you know uh, de- half dead. When he, when he fought, but uh, he was regarded as just unbeatable, you know, and uh, I know you guys never heard of him, but uh, uh, that's who the that's who the, the heavyweight Jack Dempsey was named after, it was non-parallel parallel Jack Dempsey. So, And you got to put Charlie Burley in there. I mean, Charlie Burley was, uh, was a great fighter. But uh, anyway, thanks for the uh, emails. And uh, as far as... Uh, uh, some stuff I wanted to tell you for all the boxers out there and then for your trainers, uh, your managers, uh, your coaches and the amateurs, uh, even promoters, you know, um, they got a special going on with ringside. You got to tell them Billy C sent you, but they have a new line. It's called the heritage heritage line. And, uh, they got some great deals going on this week. Uh, so if you're looking to buy some gloves or some pads, or some mitts, or some uh, protective gear, even a speed bag, uh, check it out at ringside.com. Make sure you tell them Billy C. sent you. Um, you know, uh, the Georgia State Athletic Commission. You know, I, you know the, some commissions try to help professional boxing in their state, and Georgia is one of them. I, I witnessed some stuff down in Georgia for this, uh, for this uh, uh, Grady Brewer, uh, Jorbis, uh, Bartholomew fight that, um, was just amazing at the flexibility, it, despite the conditions that this commission did. Now, I'll give you an example. The New York State Athletic Commission, they are the bullies. They're corrupt, and, uh, you know, they don't try to help uh, to have fights. As a matter of fact, they don't want fights in this, in this state. They don't. They don't. Because what they do is they drag their feet, and they make it very hard for promoters to, uh, to, to, to do what they need to do. And then they make decisions like, well, you know what? Because New York, number one, they, they have the uh, most uh, strict medicals. And, and I support them for that. I support them for that. Because if it's going to protect a fighter, um, then, uh, then that's cool. However, you've got to put an asterisk next to it. Because, you know, although they call for it and although you have to go to their doctors and they pay for it, you know, thanks to thanks to the New York State taxpayers, uh, the New York State Commission pays for the uh, extended medicals. But let me ask you a question: If you're a fighter and you're on a a, a contest report, if you're on a, a projected fight list, and uh, you do everything that you need to do, you get all your paperwork in the way out of the way, and you know, pay your fees and do all of that, and then the New York Commission a week before the fight decides that, you know what, we don't think that you're ever going to fight again in the state of New York. Therefore, we don't want your fight on our card. What would you think of that? I, I think that's a lawsuit. I think the New York State uh, Commission is, is a bunch of bullies and uh, un, unknowledgeable. They have no knowledge of the fight game. 
They're a bunch of pa- paper pushers. And uh, really, Governor Cuomo uh, needs to uh, uh, check it out. I know a lot of people are uh, starting a petition right now to have uh, the people that are in charge of the New York State Athletic Commission be ousted because of their shenanigans and underhanded corruptness that goes on in the New York State Athletic Commission. And if you don't believe me, ask anyone that's involved with them. Are you ready, America? Then let's get it on with Fight Now TV. It's time, fight fans. Your channel has arrived. All the fights. All the names, all the action, from world-class boxing events to mixed martial arts showdowns and other combat sports matchups, Fight Now TV delivers the hits and more. Call your television provider and tell them you want to get it on with Fight Now TV. For more details, go to fightnow.com. Broadcasting in all corners of the globe on the web and radio. He would scoff at a stretch of that man, I would say. You're listening to Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. From upstate New York in the good old U.S. of A. Boxing is here to stay because we are here to stay. The best two hours of boxing talk on the airwaves. Hey, fight fans, check out KOFantasyBoxing.com. KO Fantasy Boxing is boxing's only trademarked fantasy game. Check it out, www.KOFantasyBoxing.com. Select your own gym, your own fighters, track them through a season that can last from three months to a year, depending upon which league you join. you got to check this out, man, www.KOFantasyBoxing.com. Join it today. Again, www.KOFantasyBoxing.com. And tell them Billy C. sent you. Now back to Talkin' Boxing with Billy C., the only radio host man enough to take a punch from Mike Tyson. Wait a minute, man. Hold, hold, hold on there. Jeremy, man, uh, I need you to take this one, all right? Wait, what? What? No way. I, I, I can't do this. Need I remind you I'm Billy C., damn it? Now put on that mustache and get in there. Hey, hey, look at me. I'm Billy C. <laughs> The undisputed heavyweight champion of boxing talk radio. It's Talking Boxing with Billy C. Test one, two. Test one, two. My fellow Americans, good evening. Welcome back to Talking Boxing with Billy C. It's great to be here discussing the sweet science with everybody. I love boxing, I love talking boxing. That's what I do. Um, Bill. Oh, um, wait, what, Bill. What? Why are you interrupting yeah, um, me? What? Wrong, wrong, What's wrong, the problem? Billy, what? C. I did not have. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna have to ask you. Speech. To be, what do you mean, wrong, Billy C? What's going Sorry. on here? Fine, I'll go. I just wanted to talk some boxing on TPS Radio. Got that? That's all I wanted to do. I don't need your damn show. I'll get my own. Talking wrestling with the other Billy C. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. I've always been a Hulkamaniac anyway. <laughs> Guest in live, brother. Welcome back to Talking Boxing with Billy C on the mighty TPS Radio.net, brother. What you gonna do, brother? And we're back. You are listening to the Talking Boxing with Billy C show. And you're watching us on the Fight Now television channel. And if you don't have Fight Now on your sports channel lineup, you need to call your local television provider and tell them, uh, hey, I want Fight Now right now. It's that simple, man. Pick up the phone and uh, tell them that you want Fight Now right now. For all the information about the channel, you can find it on their website, www.fightnow.com. And uh, speaking of now, my man from Max Boxing, the man, the myth, the legend himself. Marty Mulcahy. You know, I'm sorry, training is part of the fight as far as I'm concerned. And if you lack in that fundamental aspect, you deserve to lose. End of story. If you come to my town, you're going to lose no matter what you do. Who does it better than Marty Mulcahy? Just don't go to his town. Marty, you with us? I'm with you intermittently. <laughs> Jesus. I'm going to have to call you back. You're fading in and you out. No, we, we just got to have uh, switch it. We got to have you just call in. But all right, sounds good, man. I'll wait yeah. to see. So Marty's going to call us back, and I told you guys that was was, was going to happen. 
Uh, for some reason, uh, it, you know what it is? It's this the phone system when it when when it calls people with the uh, with the block. You know, with the what do they call that? Uh, you know, when they when you block in numbers or whatever. Um, it it has trouble because the phone system doesn't display as a normal number, and uh, we have the same issues with uh, Alex and uh, and also actually also Dax. That's why they call in. So. Looks like Marty's going to have to, too. Are you there? Much better, right? Yeah, much better. <laughs> I guess I will have to start calling. You know what it is? It's that, um, whatever they call that, that, that you know, where, where you block numbers and stuff. Because the studio line comes over as a weird string. And I think it, it triggers like it's, you know, some kind of either bill collector, <laughs> either a bill collector or a salesman. I mean, they're both equally as bad, right? <laughs> bill collectors are giving up on us. So right. That's not a problem anymore. Right, but I it's, just... It's 4 o'clock in the morning. Nothing's supposed to be working at this time in the morning. I right. don't know. I know. Electronics are just like us. They're fussy. Right, right. But uh, anyway, hey, did you get a chance to see the... Uh, uh, the Bartholomew bite on uh, Grady Brewer? Did you watch it on the site? I have it up on the uh, website. Actually, no, I didn't. I need to do that, but... <laughs> Yeah, but actually, bites are coming more common now in boxing, so maybe it'll lose its uh, its newness in a couple of days. But yeah, I'll go check that out. Yeah, well, the uh, the Georgia State Athletic Commission really uh, came down hard on them. I'm going to talk about it in a little bit, but you know, I'm a little uptight with uh, these commissions, and you know, I think a, a, an athletic commission really should be there to try and you know help uh, promoters uh, put on shows and and try to uh, promote, basically, boxing in their state. And some do, and some don't. I, I, I know I witnessed uh, some stuff that went on in Georgia that I, I give these guys all the credit in the world. I, I certainly wouldn't have put up with as much as they did, and they really were concerned with the fighters getting a payday and fighting and staying active and blah, blah, blah. Um, but then you got states like New York, which, uh, you know, they go out of their way to... to really make it difficult and i don't understand you know i mean what's your thoughts uh, yeah i mean basically the, i hate to say a government service but this is a government service and they are there to help not to put up hurdles and you are far from the only one to complain about the new york state commission i mean for a while there you know back in the 80s it used to be they all went over to jersey in order to escape the new york commission and because of the casinos that just came in but yeah in general they're the, they are there to help and the I, I keep seeing a lot of listings for boxing fights in Georgia, and, and sometimes they don't come off for some reason. Like every weekend there's a listing for a fight, and then you look, you go like to, um, what's the site, BoxRec to find out a result, and you never see the result there. So I'm not sure what's going on with some of the venues down there, but if, if they're doing a good job, that, that's great to hear because in general, yeah, like I said, New York City has that reputation for, you know, red tape, taxes, and hurdles. So it, it's if, if there's an a alternative, and if that's Georgia, which would should have a good fight crowd down there, you know, Atlanta, that, that, that's a booming city. That, that, that has the economy to support good fight crowds, especially, uh, and, you know, socio-demographically, uh, some African-American fighters should be able to do good business in Atlanta, Georgia, you know, the way that uh, Hispanic fighters do good business in California and the way Cuban fighters should do good business in uh, Miami but don't. Yeah, you know, I mean, all in all, it's just like you said, you know, the the commission is, is, first of all, it's funded. Well, the state of California had a pretty cool thing. I mean, their commission was actually funded by itself. You know, they, they, they produced their own money from, you know, the taxes and, and the revenues, uh, the revenue stream that came in from boxing. So, you know, they, they were able to do that. But like New York State, let's say, you know, they're not. They're not because their expenses are so high uh, because of the medical requirements. And, and you know, I, I'm all for the safety, Marty. I want to see fighters be safe. I'm the one that says, hey, that we should we should even go the extra mile and make them get a head scan before they turn pro. I mean, I'm all for the safety. But when it comes to them picking and choosing, uh, you know, and, and canceling a fight because they don't think, you know, we're not talking about boxing people. We're talking about paper pushers that are just, you know, making state state employees that are making a ton of money to be bullies. And and that's what I they are. State employees. Well, state employees, yes, but state employees that were put there by a newly elected mayor or a newly elected uh, senator, you know, because those are an appointed uh, job. Those, those aren't jobs where you get into it or go into because you know the sport. You, I mean, you're basically appointed to it, and you have to learn on a job with many of these positions in the boxing commission. And remember, in New York City, it was 
I think it was in the early 2000s when Edwin Rolero, when he went to New York City, that's where they discovered that he had that motorcycle accident where, uh, you know, basically cracked his skull open. And uh, they prevented him from fighting in the United States for like uh, four or five years because, because of what they found out in New York, uh, the New York State, uh, uh, what was the, um, the, the scan that they did. Yeah, well, I mean, listen, yeah, you know, if 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 they're going to protect the fighter, I, I can't argue with that, you know. And and again, that was my point about doing a scan prior to them becoming pro, because then you have on record what you have to assume is a normal happen, scan, yeah. you know. And then the doctor can take an, an educated, make an educated decision if they see some kind of fluctuation between what what they're calling a normal scan if, or or an abnormal when they just take a scan without you know anything in his case it was unique because he had metal in his head in new york you know i i can't I, even I, they can detect that right even they did even they did right you know but 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 i mean you know if you have a fighter not everybody's brain is the same you know so you get a guy that uh, goes through the normal thing never been hurt never never been knocked out and and a scan shows that you know it's not within tolerance the way the book says but it's a normal brain scan for him they wouldn't approve it but this it's, it is so hard to predict i mean it's, I mean, who would have thought, you know, that Jake LaMotta, a guy who takes so much punishment, is is not perfectly fine, but is, is uh, you know, for the longest time, he had great recall, great memory. His brain was not as affected as the supposed defensive specialist like Muhammad Ali, who, you know, didn't go through half as many fights, didn't take as much punishment as Jake LaMotta. And I think, uh, you know, a person's brain is just like, a, like somebody's, in a way, somebody's other body where you... They can either take more punishment or simply because of, like, uh, genetics. Somehow some people's brains, just like some boxer's chin, are just better than, than others. And how do you take that into account when you're doing it? Because, you know, brain research is still basically in its infancy. I mean, look at the uh, NFL with all the concussion tests they're doing. They don't get half as many direct blows to the head as a boxer does. And you see some dramatic uh, results in the x-rays and brain scans that they're doing it with, with some of their tests now. Yeah, no, I, you know, I, again, I, I don't criticize New York for their, for their testing and, and, you know, to, in defending them. They, they foot the bill, you know, to a degree. Uh, it, it's, it's the other bully tactics I don't like, you know. Um, with New York specifically, where no other state is like them, you know, um, they got pe- First of all, their commissioner actually is a knowledgeable person. Mel- uh, um, Melvina Latham is is actually she's she's a knowledgeable uh, boxing person. However, she's not making a decision. She's got a henchman doing it, and he's just a a, a guy that is is into the power issue, you know. So you, well, you while there was Ray Kelly, right? Ray Kelly was a you know corrupt police commissioner. You know you had um, <laughs> when I was doing it, you had a guy named Ray Lacasio who who was a uh, uh, a guy that was involved in the uh, uh, pharmaceutical business. Had no knowledge of boxing. Didn't know uh, uh, a left hook from a fish hook. They had a former major league baseball uh, uh, guy in charge. I mean, just uh, yeah, and all just, these guys who donated to the campaign of the mayor who came in. So yeah, that's the way they got the the, the, the position. It was. Yeah. You know, hand it out. Yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. But anyway, let before I before I get uh, uh, you know shot when I go to New York. Um, last week there was a couple of fights I wanted to ask you about real quick. Uh, Friday night fights: Darley Perez against Barry here, a uh, Mama Janov. Um, you know I, that Mama Janov fighter. You know, a, a typical fighter from overseas that has the the, the chin. He has the uh, the strength, uh, but he's got no defense and no form. You know, if these guys learned a little bit of an American style, I think they would be almost unbeatable, uh, especially considering he, he rocked Darley Perez uh, uh, several times in that fight. Uh, but Darley Perez's, uh, you know, footwork and, and defensive skill uh, saved him. What's your thoughts? Yeah, uh, did, well, well, remember the Mama Janoff, he uh, only been in the United States for two years. He came from Uzbekistan. Um, and he had that fight in hand until the fifth round when that uppercut landed, and it was almost simultaneous with him starting to fade. Um, he had never been a 10-round distance before. I think five or uh, four or five rounds was as long as he's been before, and if he was able to maintain that pace and throw in a couple of wrinkles, uh, because Dolly Perez, he is experienced. Uh, if you keep doing the same thing over and over against him, he's going to pick up on it, and that's what you saw happening after the third, fourth round. 
he saw the timing dog he has it after he times him then he only has to figure out what is he doing to me and he started stopping that you know it was that it, the mama john off was throwing basically the big left hand and it it reached him, you know, for the first three, four rounds, and then after that, Dolly Perez caught up to him. Um, also, Dolly Perez was a much bigger man as far as uh, strength-wise, I think. Cause he, he leaned on him a little bit, and once the, the the fight got away from the center of the ring and Dolly Perez started chasing him, it was all on Perez. And it, it deserved a decision. I don't think there was anything wrong with it. Uh, it was the tale of two fights, you know. The first three, four rounds was all Mama John off. The, the last five rounds was all Dolly Perez, and... It comes down to amateur experience. That's what some of our American guys just are lacking. It's when you look at the heavyweights, especially. Dolly Perez, I think it was uh, for like six years. He went to two Olympics. He he, he just had the amateur experience. He, and he saw uh, Mama John Osper's style before in the amateurs because he was a good international. And uh, he came from Uzbekistan. And they have that, you know, Throw one punch, be accurate with it, and land it type attitude. They don't try to smother you or overwhelm you, and that's the American style. So you're right. If he would pick up on some of that and be able to change between styles a little bit more, he'd have – and I think he will, too, because he's, he's 28, I think, 27, 28, right around there. So he still has time to improve. And if you look at Mama Jano's record, he, he – I think it's a third or fourth uh, – third or uh, twelfth fight right around there. He has really upped his level of competition. He, he wasn't messing around at all. You go after Dolly Perez, who's a really good fighter and only has 12 fights. That's that, you know, that's the guy who has confidence in himself and whose team has confidence in him. No, I I agree. I agree. Um, the uh, Brian Vera Sergio Mora fight. I've heard uh, conflicting things. Uh, you know, they, there's a second fight, Brian Vera. Um, I, somebody made an interesting point to me. They said, you know, the bottom line with that fight is the judge. You know, if the judges are, are looking at the aggressive fighter throwing punches, um, then that's why, and it appears that those were the way the uh, three judges were, and that's why Brian Vera won. However, if they were looking closely and, uh, uh, you know, was giving points to fighters that are able to fight backwards and land shots on their way back, then Mora should have won that fight. What do you think? It's, it's, it's hard to tell between them. It's, uh, it's not, like a... Uh... Every judge has their biases, just like we do. They prefer a certain type of fighter. And with, with Brian Villa, he's a he's the action guy. And I keep telling uh, people that, you know, the reason some of these fighters lose fight is, as a boxer, you know, your first job is to land punches on your opponent. Your second job is to get the judges to pay attention to what you're doing and not what your opponent is doing. And Brian Villa, by coming forward, throwing a lot of punches, the judges are looking at him. They're not looking at Sergio Moore. If you throw ten punches land three, but your opponent only throws, you know, five punches and lands three, they're going to be looking at you more just simply because you're the busier guy, and I think that's what happened here. Plus, it's in Texas. The judges know Brian Bill more. Uh, Sergio Moore, I don't think he had much of a complaint. I, the, the scores were way off. I thought it was like a two-round fight. A, a draw I wouldn't, have been, uh, wouldn't have been a bad decision. But Sergio Moore has nothing to complain about because he simply didn't put in the work. <laughs> You know, you can complain about not being appreciated, but if you, if you don't have the the superior speed, which Sergio Mar had a bit more speed, if you're not clearly superior in any department, you have to work harder. And that's what Brian Bill has figured out, and uh, Sergio Mar, and uh, and uh, Brian, I mean Brian Bill has figured out, and Sergio Mar has not. It's just you put in more work inside the ring, and you will be appreciated more. Is what it comes down to. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I. I've, and, goes, and, and, and I know and, and Sergio Moore is being kind of a he's being discriminated against for his style because you know he's not the the volume puncher he is more of a precise puncher who relies on counter punching who wants the other guy to make a mistake but Brian Mel was uh, Bill was making plenty of mistakes and Sergio Moore was not counting as much as he should have especially in the middle round. Well, you know, I mean, defensive skill is a requirement in boxing with the combination of some offense you know I, I mean you know let's face it you're not going to you're not going to score with defense you're not you know you need defense to prevent uh, your opponent from landing flush shots on you but uh, it, it boils down to offense marty and uh you know I, I can't stand listening to these fighters that are predominantly really good defensive fighters and cry about decisions when they're not active enough in the offense you know bernard hopkins is very similar to that i mean he's a different style fighter than than sergio sergio is actually a 
a better boxer than than him. But um, you know, you you can't expect to win without throwing punches. You know, Winky Wright used to complain uh, about it too, and he was a good defensive fighter, but sometimes he didn't throw enough punches. And Winky uh, it was the type of guy who was good at rolling with the punch, so it looked like the punch connected solidly, but he actually rolled with it. And you know, there's a difference between rolling with it and and moving away and making sure you don't get tagged with it, and rolling with it and coming back with your own punch right away. And that is the, that's what separates the the really elite like like Floyd Mayweather and uh, and a guy like uh, like uh, Sergio Moore who who will make his opponent miss, but then doesn't follow up with it and you know, score that impressive one big punch and then repeat it over and over again to where the judges have to appreciate it. They have to look at it and say, you know, there's a difference between ineffective aggression and aggression. Yeah, no, I, it's true. It's true. We've got a couple of decent fights uh, this weekend. and um, I actually I want to start off with the Juan Carlos Salgado and Jonathan ba- Barrios fight. fight of the I, weekend, yeah. That's a good one, man. It's got to be the fight of the weekend. What's your thoughts? Um, I'm hoping I can see it. I'm not sure if this is on Telefoto, Telemundo, TV Azteca. I'm going to have to search for it tomorrow on, uh, uh, on Saturday night. Um, a tough fight to call. This is a two evenly matched guys. I mean, physically, record-wise, where they're at in their career, age-wise. Um, and, you know, when it comes down to it, it's almost like baseball. You know, um, a tie goes to the runner. And everything in this fight looks like a tie. So a tie, for me, is going to go to the hometown guy which is Juan Salgado. Um, I, I like Salgado. I just don't think... I always thought he was a little bit overrated. Uh, his win over Jorge Linares, first-round knockout, a bit fluky. He caught him, you know, on the temple and the ear, and, uh, you know, he never recovered from it. And uh, Linares, I always thought, was an elite fighter. But that uh, that win was followed up. He went to Japan and lost, uh, uh, I think uh, I think he was knocked out in the late stages against uh, a good Takashi uh, Uchiyama. And after that, you know, he pulled off some good wins against against really good opponents. Uh, and, and he is a high-level guy, but he's always squeaking by. He's never looking dominant. Uh, he doesn't have the greatest power, but it, but it has some pop to it, you know. He doesn't have the greatest speed, but he lands his punches. Everything is average, but at the end of the day, he ends up winning the fight. And with uh, Jonathan uh, Bowers, it's the exact same thing. There's no, no one thing that stands out that says, you know, elite guy. Uh, two fights against Celestino Cabrillo, both close. Uh, the first one was uh, in Argentina. And like I said, the tie goes to the hometown guy. Many people think that he got a hometown decision in his first fight against Celestino Cabrillo. And then they rematched, and he lost a, a, a decision to Cabrillo in Argentina. So, like I said, if you look at him physically, they, they, I think uh, Salgado's a little bit bigger than him, so that's also to his advantage. But style-wise, this is, I think, where we were talking about the Sergio Moore and Brian Vila, where he has to go in. Bowles is a counterpuncher, and if he's going to Mexico, he's not going to win counterpunching. He has to be the stronger guy, and he's not. So I, 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 when, I, when I did my uh, yearly previews at lightweight, uh, uh, Bowles was, the, I mean, uh, the junior lightweight, I picked the uh, uh, Juan Carlos uh, Sanchez to be the guy to lose his title. So I don't have a lot of faith in him, but I think schedule why he's going to win this fight close. And if it's a if it's a draw, then you know Bowers won the fight. But still, I think Salgado's going to get this win. Um, there's a WBF uh, world title fight, and and I, you know I, I'm starting to really have some faith in in them and and their the changes that are going on there and. The other sanctioning bodies just keep getting worse and worse and worse. But uh, Jose Lopez against Jose Emilio Pera, Pera. Um, it's a good fight on paper. What do you think uh, in reality? Whoa, can you hear me still? Yeah, I can hear you. You, uh, you just really faded out. Can I give you a quick call back? Just... You can't hear me? Yeah, I can, but I'm hearing myself looping. All right, almost. all right, can sounds good. One sounds good, all right. So Marty's going to give us a shout back. Uh, I might have thrown him a curve with that question. He's probably going to quickly run to his computer. But uh, it's a WBF world welterweight fight between Jose Lopez and uh, Jose Emilio Pera. And, uh, or Pira. Is it Pira or Pera? I think it's Pera. But uh, it's going to be part of our uh, challenge. In case you missed it, um, get back involved with the Billy C. Challenge. We give prizes away every month for the person with the winning percentage, best winning percentage. And um, it doesn't cost you anything. All you got to do is go up to the website, www.billycboxing.com, 
and uh, click the Billy C. Challenge. But uh, we got Marty back. Is it better? Uh, yeah, that is much better. I don't know what happened there. It was just like, <laughs> almost like a big pop and then uh, going into a tunnel. I heard my nothing but myself. It must, like, have been, it must have been a shift change with the, uh, with the squirrels that are running the Colorado phone system, right? Just something that was like I said, something that never happened before. Um, Jose Lopez against Jose Emilio Pera is the uh, WBF. It's for the vacant WBF World uh, Welterweight title. What's your thoughts on that fight? Oh wow! Um, honestly, that, that, that didn't seem to be on my radar. Uh, but I, I know Jose Lopez uh, simply because uh, I think he fought a Russian fighter a while back, and uh, in uh, your know, Ukraine, or I forget where he went to, but uh, I know him from his loss, basically, and I, that's the, the only thing I really know about him. Um, is that the Mexican fighter, that's about as, as, as much of an insight as I can give you. Uh, that is a club fighter, basically, is what it comes down to, and uh, I guess uh, Pera, I know absolutely nothing about, as, as far as uh, who, who he's fought in, but uh, going on the little bit of knowledge I have, I'd have to say uh, it would be Lopez. I, I'm not, I'm not even sure if he's from what area of Mexico he's from because just like in the United States, you know, you have Texas, California, New York, and if they're fighting in their home area, if the judges are more aware with them, you know, you, you kind of have to lean toward that fighter. So it, I'm in the dark there as well, but I would I would guess Lopez because, like I said, I saw him again. He gets, uh, I want to say, pa Pasco, Pascal, or something like that when he went over to Russia, and that's the only film footage I've ever seen of him, and he didn't look that impressive there. Um, you know, uh, on Telefutura, there's a couple of interesting fights. The one that I'm having trouble with is the main event. Uh, Brennan's Prescott against uh, Gato Figueroa. Gato Figueroa at times has looked very good, and, and other times he's looked really bad. But Prescott really seems just one-dimensional to me, and, and with the exception of that one big fight that put him on the map, yeah. he's really done nothing else. Uh, who do you like in this one? Yeah, he's, but that one dimension is a really big dimension. He's got that that big uh, that big punch there. Um, yeah, I heard somebody describe him as uh, the best four round fighter in all of boxing, and they they got a good point there. You know, Prescott is a guy who comes out, presses really hard in the first four or five rounds, tries to gain the advantage, but after that, uh, like we were talking uh, earlier with uh, Brian Vera, I mean not with uh, Malajano, there's no there's no style to his game where. He has a plan B, or he can throw in a, a you know, a, a good left hand to go along with his big right hand. He just he's, like you said, one dimensional, and he comes forward. If you if you can stop his one big dimension, you can beat him. But I don't think uh, Figueroa is that guy. He's uh, got to be at least uh, 34, 35, right around there. Um, whenever he stepped up, he ha he's lost. Uh, Randall Bailey, I know he's lost too. Um, I'm trying to think the other guy that he just recently fought a, a young kid coming out. Um, he's a he's the type of guy. He's a, a C plus level guy, a C C plus guy. And when he steps up to the next level, he always loses. Usually in entertaining fashion. Uh, I know he got knocked out big by Randall Bailey, and he's he's willing to step in there and take the shots. And honestly, I thought he retired like a couple years ago after that Randall Bailey fight. But uh, you know, with, with guys like this, you're not surprised to see their name pop up two three years, years later as an opponent. The only thing with Figueroa is. Yeah, he's a southpaw. Maybe that would give him a little bit of advantage against the greatest Prescott, who, like we said, doesn't have those added dimensions. Um, I, if he doesn't get knocked out in the first three, four rounds, I think he goes a distance, but either way, he loses the fight. Yeah, you know, uh, it's a tough one. I, I, I think he's, uh, well, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I think like it's... I said, my thing with him is, uh, like I said, I thought he was retired, so if he's coming back, uh, yeah, I don't think he's coming back chasing a title. I think he's coming back chasing money. Right. Well, no, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, Friday Night Fights main event uh, was changed. Uh, well, now we got the main event is Carlos Molina against Damian Frias. Pretty decent fight. What do you like? Who do you like in that one? Uh, yeah, Frias, he's a, he's a sparring uh, partner guy. You know, he's got not sparring partner syndrome because uh, he never stepped up into the big limelight. Yeah, he's a guy who's been in, against the, in, the, in the sparring ring, you know, been in there with Joshua Clarte, Zab Judah, Randall Bailey, who I just mentioned. Uh, any of those, uh, you know, Southern, anybody who goes down to Florida and is between 135 and 147 pounds, they've they spot against Frias. 
Um, but he just, uh, he, he's a good worker. He's Cuban, but he's not the Cuban that we expected. You know, he came from Cuba at a young age, never went to the Cuban amateur system. He actually came to boxing late. I don't think he started boxing until his 20s. So he doesn't have that those innate ring skills that you expect uh, from a Cuban. He is slick. Uh, when he first uh, started boxing, he was taught uh, by a defensive coach. So this is a guy who thinks defense first and then tries to, tries to counter and uh, make the other guy miss and, and, uh, and uh, capitalize on those opportunities. But Carlos Molina is an average record, you know, 19, 5, and 2. And, but what he does inside the ring is, is really good. Back in the 30s and 40s, he, was, he, uh, he would have been a great club fighter. And that is no, that's not a disparaging remark. That actually back in, back in the 30s and 40s, that was a compliment. And he should be, he's a blue-collar guy who's just going to outwork you. Like we were talking about with Sergio Moore, you know, he doesn't put in the work. Molina is the exact opposite. He works and works and works. He doesn't have a big punch. Uh, in his first fight against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. down in Mexico, pretty much got robbed. Most people think that he won that fight. The rematch was close. Um, now he's really put it all together as far as uh, mentality. He doesn't go into fights thinking he's the, the B side anymore. He thinks he's the A side. Uh, Gabriel uh, Randy Lara, a really tough fight that ended in a draw. Most people thought he won it. Um, uh, against Paul Williams, you know, got that win. So he is he is a legitimate top ten guy because he works hard. Because he doesn't have overwhelming speed, has little power, but he's a great judge of distance. And he gets to the point of engagement first with his feet. You know, because his hands aren't going to do it. He he's really tricky with his feet. He flies inside of a punch and delivers a two punch combination of his own and gets back out. That's what he did to James Copeland. And he was winning that fight before, you know, the Texas judge pretty much uh, took it away from him with that disqualification. Um, this should be all Carlos Molina. He's probably going to win eight of the ten rounds. And he's just going to smother Frias, who's a strong guy but doesn't have the boxing, you know, the muscle memory. He hasn't been in the ring for as long as Molina. And he's always going to be, you know, that, that fraction of a second behind Molina. And he's going to be chasing the fight where Molina is going to be, you know, right on top of him, stay down there. I don't think it's going to be that exciting at all. It, both fights are kind of uh, where the styles don't mesh up, where one fighter is uh, obviously going to be more dominant than the other, is just going to just going to smother the other man's offense. And that's what Molina does. He's going to smother Frias and uh, will win a decision. So basically a typical ESPN fight. <laughs> uh, well, the, the last weekend, you know, the Dolly Perez fight against Mario John, I thought that was a really good card, and even the opener for that it was good. But... Uh, just uh, this, I thought the main event that was scheduled, Donna Stevenson against George, that was a that was a really good matchup. That was going to be a knockout one way or the other. Whereas now they brought in uh, Dionoso Miranda, who has a big punch. Yeah, I got, in my preview, I said he has a puncher's chance, but little else, and that's basically what it comes down to. And Donovan George, he doesn't have any defense, but he has a decent chin. So when and Dionoso Miranda, he's a guy that does not have a decent chin at all. So Don George is in that fight, a uh, knockout by the fourth, fifth round. You know, Donovan George, uh, I, I like him. I like him because he's uh, he never quits. He comes at you, but oh, his yeah. skill level is so limited. And uh, it is. And that that when uh, who was it, Sierra? That was uh, oh, yeah, at the end of that Sierra fight. Uh, it looked like he even worked out with the baseball. It looked like a mob hit. It didn't look like a like a boxing fight. And remember, Donovan George has his father in his, in his corner. And I thought for him to allow his son to go out there round after round and get get just beaten up by Sierra was a uh, borderline child abuse. You know, the funny thing is, is that. I wonder why Adonis Stevenson backed out of that fight. I, I don't buy that injury for some. Injury? You know, and a lot of. And a, already for October. So, uh, I mean, this is pretty much an IBF mandated fight. So, these two are going to have to meet at some time. And for Adonis Stevenson to keep putting it off, uh, he's losing money every time he puts it off, especially if he did go down to a training camp. You know, that costs money. Yeah, but, you know, the, the thing is, is that. I was talking about this. A lot of people feel that it was BS. And, and, yeah, it's a mandatory fight. But if you feel you're not ready, you know, remember, Donna Stevenson's weakness is his own chin. I mean, I, you know, I mean, yes, he's a powerful puncher and stuff, but he's been knocked out cold himself early on. And, uh, um, I, that was kind of not, not fluky, you don't want to say. Plus, now he has Emmanuel Stewart in his corner. And if you're going to fake an injury, you're going to fake a lower back injury, not a hand injury that can be more easily verified. Yeah, I mean, that is my opinion of it. Uh, yeah, I don't doubt that, you know, it does happen. These things do happen. 
But especially a week before the fight, like I said, if you're going to a training camp, you, you have to spend money in those training camps. And, you know, do it four or five weeks, of, you know, three weeks before the fight is more of the, uh, the, the way it's done, I would, I would think. The, the, the week before, that, that, uh, that smacks more of a legitimate injury, injury to me. Yeah, I, I could be, you know, but similar to a lower back injury, uh, you know, a severe bruise in the hand also doesn't show any, any, uh, uh, you know, X-rays or anything like that, and 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 some but of the shots. Well, the swelling and stuff like that. Well, the swelling, you know, fighters that that have a hard workout hitting a hitting a heavy bag, their hands get swelled anyway, you know, and and the shots I saw, uh, he didn't, it didn't look that swollen, you know, so. But, uh, hey, we'll never know. Maybe he just felt like Pascal, same injury, that maybe they just weren't in the right shape. Something just, just you know, mentally they didn't feel ready. And, and you know, if, if you're feeling like that before the fight, you know, you got to make a move. And that's what it just seems like to me. But, uh, it's true, but then, then also you have to do with him. You have to take an age. He's an aging fighter as well. He, I mean, he and his team have to know that, you know, by the time they get to a title shot, even if they win it, you're not going to be able to capitalize at that age. Uh, he needs to. He needs to get this uh, this whole career in the you know in the motion. Basically, is what it comes down to. Right. No, I agree. I guess. I mean, uh, we have no. Well, we have to see. You know, but uh, uh, hopefully, it'll happen sooner than later. I know they already That's talked bad. about I think October. He was a favorite in the, in that fight. I mean, yeah, I like uh, I like George inside the ring. You know, his a. Uh, his attitude, and he is like I said. He, he, you don't have to work to get him out of there, but he is—he is, he is eminently beatable. Yeah, no, I know, I know. But uh, anyway, well, listen, man, I appreciate uh, you uh, calling us back four or five times with the crappy connection. And yeah, uh, I'm gonna go dig up my phone line and see if I where I can find the the, the split in the cable. <laughs> yeah, I think you're gonna see that it's that <laughs> interceptor or whatever you got going on there. But uh, uh, anyway, listen, Marty. Uh, we won't be uh, chatting with you next week. We're not doing a live show on Friday, but uh, the week after, we'll be there. Actually, that's not bad because there's nothing happening till September. I mean, September is going to be a fantastic month of boxing. It will make up for all the crap. There was, it was actually no crap at all that we had in August. But, uh, yeah, September, I mean, if you can go to sleep now, wake up on September 1st, that's a boxing guy's plan. Like October looks good. October September. looks good too. It looks like we got a strong September, October, and then it's going to be dormant till January. You watch. And then you, uh, November, you usually have one big pay per view, so something will materialize there. Yeah. All right, brother. Have a good weekend, and uh, we'll talk to you in a couple. Enjoy. And if you guys can find that uh, Sargallo fight, you know that's the only fight of the weekend. It's going to be on some, on some, <laughs> some Mexican channel where you know you, where they. Well, yeah, that's another thing. Why don't they provide American? Uh, uh, SAP, the, the subtitles, like they do, you know, Spanish subtitles. Because we don't get anything, man. It's it's wrong for us not to offer the SAP for the Spanish-speaking Americans, but if you said that, hey, let's face it, it's like it's like the all-black college. You know, it's okay to have an all-black uh, yeah. college, but if you, God forbid, somebody came out with an all-white college, oh, that's a problem, <laughs> you know? Well, actually, I think there was, well, now we're getting way off the top, but there was some news where... Uh, one of the traditionally black colleges down there hired a white uh, football coach, and that was like a uh, made news there for a big for a while because you know they weren't giving the uh, the, the coaching job to an African American, which they kind of assumed which would happen. And in this day and age, you know, it, we're so racially diverse, so you should not, not make any assumptions about race. Yeah. Everything should be equal. It's equal, and right? That's the one great thing about boxing. Even back in the 1930s, you know, baseball is all uppity about all oh, we brought Jackie Robinson to the, uh, the you know. To Major League Baseball. Well, 30 years before that, we had black uh, world champions, so they were 30 years behind the time, and uh, they all baseball just pissed me off. <laughs> yeah, no, I, and you know what? And and they leave out the part where you know Jackie Robinson. Yeah, they brought Jackie Robinson in, but you know what did he have to endure, man? I mean, you know, oh, yeah. people spitting yeah. at him, and it was just it was just terrible. Even Jack Johnson. In our business, oh, you know, I mean, yeah. uh, uh, what that guy went through, but he was hated by both uh, black Americans and white Americans yeah, because you know. People forget that Jackie Robinson might have never made it to Major League Baseball without Joe Lewis because uh, he uh, punched the white officer in Kansas, and Joe Lewis pretty much got him out of that court martial. If he wouldn't have been, if he would have been court martialed, you know, he would have never made it to the Major League Baseball. So, you know, Major League Baseball can thank Joe Lewis. Hey, Joe Lewis. The the military should thank Joe Lewis. He was one of the ones instrumental in in getting rid of segregation. They they were expecting Joe Lewis to fight, uh, in 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 fights to raise money for 
for the government, Obama. and then they didn't want right, and then they didn't want they didn't want black, um, um, you know, enlisted men yeah, to be able to watch. Yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, he was uh, very instrumental. Great point there, but uh, anyway, Marty, listen, I know you got to yeah, run. And you, keep, you, you keep bringing me back here. My wife's looking at me like saying, "Come my direction," so I got to go her direction. All right, <laughs> All right brother, we'll talk to you in a couple. All right, bye. All right, take care. That's Marty Mulcahy uh, giving us his thoughts on, uh, well, a lot of stuff. But, uh, of course, uh, uh, the stuff we like the best with him. And that's the, uh, you know, his uh, thoughts on the fights. Hey, listen, we got to take a break. We're a little over ourselves. Talk and Boxing with Billy C. now has official merchandise available on TalkinBoxing.com. T-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies and mugs, and, yes, even undergarments. Talking Boxing Apparel is the perfect gift for the boxing fan in your life. Log on to www.talkinboxing.com. That's T A L K I N B O X I N G.com. And place your order today. Join us here for two hours as Billy and the gang do what they do best. Every time I start talking about boxing, a white man got to pull a rock and march out of his Rock and march out of good. Fuck a bad Joe Lewis. Rock and march out of his In Joe Lewis's ass. Joe Lewis was 75 years old when he fought him. Huh? What? We're supposed to be talking boxing. It's Talking Boxing with Billy C. As Billy C. sits here in the multi-million dollar Talkin' Boxing Studios, sipping a fine wine before you're even out of bed, you should be thinking, damn, I wish I had a mustache like his. It's the Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. show. He's Billy C. And you're not. Sucks to be you. Now let's dig into our archives and hear a rare interview when Billy C. first became the champion of Boxing Talk Radio. Uh, hello, Billy C. As the new champ, can we ask you a few questions? Why, certainly. Okay, your fans would like to know how you and your corner have successfully walloped the competition. We're not ordinary people. We're morons. Anything else? I'm a victim of circumstance. Did your success finally come when you made the show five days a week for two hours? What do you think? I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. Now, please tell the listeners what you've learned from making it this far. Certainly. If at first you don't succeed, keep on sucking till you do succeed. Great words of wisdom, Billy C. Keep up the great work as the undisputed people's champion with your show, Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. Any last words to anyone who's listening? This is your fault, you bonehead. And we're back. You are listening to the Talking Boxing with Billy C. Show. You're watching us on the Fight Now television channel. And if you don't have Fight Now in your sports channel lineup, then uh, you need to call your local television provider, whether it's satellite dish or cable, and tell them that you want Fight Now right now. That's right. Tell them you want Fight Now right now. Pick up the phone and call them for all the information about the channel. You can find it on the website, www.fightnow.com. Murphy just popped in the chat room. And uh, he uh, made an interesting point. He said, now i got to pick all the fights on my own. Hey, which reminds me, everybody that was involved in the Billy C. Challenge, it's back. However, however, a little glitch with it right now that we're uh, working on. So here's what you got to do for this week. We are kicking it off. And uh, we're going to roll. Uh, uh, we're gonna, well, if we, if we get enough people to do it and we have a clear definitive winner, we will have an August prize, Okay. But we do uh, monthly prizes, so we should have a definitive winner. And if not, I'll give ties out, man. If we got ties, we'll give them all out. So get involved. You know that uh, all you got to do is pick the right ones. It doesn't matter uh, if it's by knockout or, or a decision or robbery or whatever. As long as you got the right side, you win. And uh, we'll start uh, everybody's off with a clean slate. But for this week, what you got to do, and I'm going to give you the picks coming up in a little bit, but my picks, but... Uh, what you got to do this week is email me your picks, okay? Billy at Talkin' Boxing, T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G. That's Billy at Talkin' Boxing, T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G dot com. Email me your picks. There's six of them. And uh, they got to be emailed, and that's what we're going to do, the timestamp. So I recommend that you email them today. 
um, and uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll get your picks in. And providing the fight didn't take place, if the fight didn't, if the fight already took place, then uh, you know that's not going to be counted. Uh, and then what I'll do is with the email address, I will register your email because that's a feature we have in the new uh, the new program that will automatically email you the following week's picks. So as soon as I input the week's picks for next week, if you email me this week, you'll get the email. For anyone else that waits, when you sign up, you got to put your email address in. So um, that's what that's all about. All right? So uh, stay tuned for that. Now, some news. Um, the Georgia State Athletic Commission uh, has uh, come down pretty hard on uh, Gio Bartholomew. Now, that's the fight I called. I, I called that fight ringside with Cesar Hernandez. And uh, it was an interesting uh, weekend for me down in Georgia. Uh, but uh, Grady Brewer and uh, Jorbis Bartholomew fought for the vacant International Boxing Organization Intercontinental uh, Junior Middleweight title. And, um, you know, some of the reports you're reading are, are wrong. It was a fifth-round DQ, uh, not a fourth. It was a fifth-round DQ. And um, what had taken place in that fight was uh, the first round uh, was, uh, was kind of could have went either way. It was a, a lackluster round. I scored it for Bartholomew. The second round, Bartholomew won because he dropped Grady Brewer. The third round... Um, you could have argued and said that uh, uh, Grady Brewer started coming back. He started loosening up. He started that fight very dry. And um, uh, he started frustrating Bartholomew, primarily when Bartholomew would, would hold him and, and bully him, bully him almost like the New York State Athletic Commission bullies promoters and fighters and managers and everybody. But, uh, you know, they, when he bullied him against the ropes, um, what Grady Brewer would do would uh, uh, you know punch him with his free hand in the side of the head legally, not behind the head, in the side of the head, and it was starting to infuriate Bartholomew. Now he was deducted a point uh, in the fourth round because he literally tackled, you know, put his arms around, wrapped him up like you would tackle a tackling dummy, and uh, tackled uh, Grady Brewer, and he got deducted a point because he was uh, warned at least three times by the referee, and that was in the fourth round. When the fifth round started, Bartholomew started with the roughhouse, roughhouse tactics again. And uh, uh, once again, when he had him uh, against the ropes, when Bartholomew had uh, uh, Grady Brewer against the ropes, Grady Brewer was hitting him with his free hand. And next thing you know, um, Bartholomew uh, kind of gave him a little headbutt, like, like an uppercut headbutt right to the chin, and then reached around and bit him on the neck. Now, if you want to watch the fight, all five rounds are up on BillyCBoxing.com. You can check it out by going to the front page. Uh, scroll down a little bit. You'll see the link. Or if it's you don't feel like scrolling down, just find where it says Wednesday Night Fights, which is also uh, you got to scroll down. It'll be on the right-hand side. There's a banner that says Wednesday Night Fights. Or you can go right to the bottom of the page, and you'll see a big banner that says Wednesday Night Fights. Uh, you click that, and that'll take you to this fight. So check it out, and uh, let me know what you think. Now, the Georgia State Athletic Commission... Uh, which is called uh, the Georgia State Athletic and Entertainment Commission. Um, they had their monthly meeting and they reviewed this fight. And here's what they did. Not only did they hold up his purse, all right, they uh, unanimously voted on not paying Bartholomew. Nine grand. Nine grand is what he got paid for this fight. And they, they decided not to pay him. So uh, they, they, they withheld his purse. That's number one. Number two, they find him another thousand dollars, which they'll never see, and they suspended him for ten years. That's pretty much over for Bartholomew. He's forty-one years old. He's not fighting at fifty-one, man. He's not fighting at fifty-one. So uh, pretty, pretty hard uh, sentence. That uh, you know, pretty hard sentence that uh, uh, Bartholomew uh, got. So. Uh, I, I applaud the uh, Georgia State Athletic Commission. I like commissions that that are for the fighters and for the promoters, you know, and for the sport. You know, I despise commissions that uh, that go out of their way to prevent boxing from happening. Commissions like New York State Athletic Commission is run by uh, a bunch of uh, you know power hungry people. They're like uh, they're like the building inspector. You know, the building inspector that, that you know, approves your CO 
for a house if you're building a house or if you're having an addition built and you know you got to have the building inspector come and uh you know uh, there's two ways of doing it you know they inspect it and and you want it right just like you want the, the commission to do their job right you know i i want a commission that's going to do their job i'm not looking for a commission that just doesn't care i'm not saying uh uh, you know, that that's the problem. The problem with New York Commission is that they over commission. They overstep their bounds. They think who the F they are, you know, and and guess what? You have no control over it and they know it. Just like a building inspector. Guy's got a bad day. You know, he spilled his coffee on, all over himself on his way into work or, or his wife pissed him off. You know, so he, he's walking around all day all pissed off. Let's go. Let's go to the data. Let's see how many. Let's see how many uh, sites he failed that day when he was in a bad mood. Well, that's not fair. It's not fair to the contractors. It's not fair to the homeowners. And it's the same thing. It's the same analogy here with boxing. You know, it's not fair to the promoters. It's not fair to the boxers. You know, it's not fair to the managers and all the people involved. It's not fair to us, the fans, when you have a commission that over commissions. Their job is to enforce the rules. Their job is to make sure that the fighters are safe, and that's it. They do not have to overstep their bounds. They don't have to, you know, uh, ask for fancy hotel rooms, which they're not supposed to do. They're not supposed to define what uh, sanctioning bodies, uh, sanctioning belts, what they pay. The the sanctioning bodies tell you what, what they pay, and it's only a suggestion. Not in New York. Not in New York, it's not. But anyway, speaking of sanctioning bodies, the WBC has uh, declared that the uh, the big fight in the super bantamweight division uh, that's coming up uh, between at the Home Depot Center in October, October 13th, between uh, Toki Shaki Nikashoka and uh, our boy, uh, the Filipino flash Nonito Donaire um, is now going to be for the diamond belt. Um. WTF, what does that mean? It's for the diamond belt. Does that mean that, you know, he was stripped? Is, is Donaire stripped or, or is uh, Nick Ashoka stripped now? You know, because uh, uh, Nick Ashoka was the, was the super bantamweight champion, the WBC super bantamweight champ. So, so does that mean he, they, they took that title away from him and, and now they're going to make him fight for the, their diamond belt? You know, if you remember, isn't that exactly what they did to Sergio Martinez? You know, Sergio Martinez, you know, th- this is the WBC. Let, now, now, let's make no mistake. This is the WBC's way of making sure that Nonito Donaire gets this belt somehow. And I'll tell you why. Nonito Donaire does not have the WBC belt. Nonito Donaire has, uh, I think, uh, the WBO and the IBF belt. But the WBC wants him to have their belt, right? They want him because he's a cash cow. And they're not into unifying titles. Now, the WBC champion happens to be uh, Nick Ashoka. So what, is, uh, what does the WBC do? No. Oh, they want to ensure that Donaire gets the title by elevating uh, Nick Ashoka to the WBC uh, diamond champion. And therefore, the belt on the line, their belt on the line, is the uh, diamond belt. So should Nikashoka win, Nonito Donaire will somehow get a shot at the vacated, regular Super Bantamweight uh, title. And then Nikashoka would have to wait his turn to get a shot at Nonito Donaire to win back the belt that they're stripping him of and giving the illusion that it's a better belt. Listen, if it sounds crazy, just look at it, Sergio Martinez. Because isn't that what they did to him? Isn't that exactly what they did to him? They wanted Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. to get the title. So what did they do? They so-called elevated Sergio Martinez to the diamond champion. Now he's the diamond champion. Which, in my mind, makes it sound like he's a better champion than the regular old, you know, regular old titleist. But nay, nay, because then Sergio Martinez had to wait not one but almost two years to get a shot at uh, definitely two years to get a shot at at uh, at uh, Chavez Jr., which he's finally going to get in a couple of weeks. How do you explain that, WBC? 
how do you elevate a fighter and then made it, make him wait for two years before you mandate a shot at the belt you stripped them of? So don't be surprised if Nick Ashoka beats Nonito Donaire on, in October and then Nonito Donaire somehow, some way, manages to get the belt from the WBC, the regular world title belt, and then the rematch, which there is a rematch clause, uh, will wait until Nonito Donaire defends it a f- couple of times and then will fight Nick Ashoka which they'll bill as for Nonito Donaire's title, and all of a sudden this diamond-studded title becomes valueless. Only in the WBC. Crazy, crazy stuff. Billy Lyle is coming back. Uh, you know, I hate to mention the IBF, especially when you guys are looking at me with that right now, but uh, Billy Lyle's coming back on September 29th, and uh, he's going to be uh, taking on uh, uh, Ceresio Fort, who's undefeated. 13-0 and 0 with a draw. It's going to be for the interim NABA Super Welterweight title. 10-round um, fight. It's going to be taking place in Minnesota. Oh, they even have fights in Minnesota? Uh, Alexander Pavekian and Haseem Rahman. The biggest joke fight of the century. Haseem Rahman has no business being in the ring with anyone, let alone uh, a so-called champion. Now, I think that the WBA champion... Uh, is a big fraud himself. Not 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 as a fighter, but as a champion. Alexander Povekian, there's no way he should be a champion. I mean, the only champions there are in the heavyweight division is uh, the Klitschko brothers and the story. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you can't even you can't even think any beyond them. You can't. But you know what? I kind of like what I'm hearing and seeing. You know, Teddy Atlas has irked me big time during the whole thing about Povekian. He advised Pavekian to turn down his shot at the title. And he made the illusion that it, he wasn't ready. And I'm not saying he was ready. And he's not ready now. He just, he'll never be ready. He'll never beat a Klitschko. In a million years, Pavekian will never beat a Klitschko. Jeez, I didn't even think he bought, beat Marco Captain the Huck. I, I, I had Huck win in that fight. Pavekian just is never going to beat Klitschko in his best day. All Teddy Atlas did was prevent him from making a million-dollar payday three years ago. Now he had to wait all this time to get another shot, and he still didn't get a shot. As a matter of fact, he's got to fight Haseem Rahman to try and get a shot at that million-dollar payday that Teddy Atlas advised him to walk away from. And as we later saw, over the time, the tutelage that Teddy Atlas did for uh, Pavekium did nothing. Did nothing for this guy. Did not improve him one bit. He did not fight... Anyone, when he fought Marco Captain Huck, it wasn't with Teddy Atlas. And Teddy Atlas said, oh, the reason why he didn't look good is because he wasn't with me. Well, now he's with Costa Zoo. And Costa Zoo had a pretty damn good professional record, something Teddy Atlas, you know, can never boast. You know, Costa Zoo had a great amateur career, something uh, Teddy Atlas uh, uh, could never boast, you know, having the same great career as Costa Zoo. Costa Zoo was a undisputed world champion, something Teddy Atlas could never do, and uh, you know claim. And now Costa Zoo is uh, starting his uh, training. You know he's starting to train. He's starting to get a couple of decent fighters, and now he's got uh, Alexander Povekian, something that's probably eaten up Teddy Atlas. But here's the best part: Povekian, in the press conference yesterday, they weren't even acknowledging Rockman, and who is? We're not. None of us are. You know, Rockman is just a, a joke. He's a fraud. You know, he's one punch made his name known, and this is just a, a, a an ind- indication that Sourland is just using him. Um, you know, because he's a name, and they know it's a win for Pavekian. I mean, they didn't even put his picture on the poster, so Rockman is pissed off about that. But here's the best part. They asked him uh, Pavekian how he felt uh, his training was going under Costa Zoo. And he started saying, oh, finally, you know, I, I, I'm not going to run out of gas. My training is good. My conditioning is good. My conditioning is good. My conditioning is good. He must have said it three or four times in, in the, uh, at the press conference yesterday, how much it's improved, the style of his conditioning. You know, what's that telling us subliminally? <laughs> Teddy Atlas uh, didn't do such a hot job with conditioning. Now, Teddy's probably going to say, well, that wasn't my job, man. You know, I was supposed to be there. I'm the I'm the hired gun. I'm the Manny Stewart 
I'm the Freddie Roach. No, Teddy, you're not. You're not Manny Stewart. You're not Freddie Roach. You're not Buddy McGirt. You're not anybody as a trainer in the pros. You're not. Sorry, Teddy. You know, what you should be doing is training the amateurs because you're a damn good amateur guy. Damn good. And and I believe that Teddy Atlas should take over our amateur program. I think that USA Boxing should give the whole reins to Teddy Atlas and say, fix this, please. That's where Teddy Atlas is missing his, his calling. Teddy Atlas could make United States Boxing, uh, you know, reputable again. That's where he excels in the amateurs, not in the pros. And why? Not because he's not good enough for the pros, but his style is much better for the amateurs. I used the analogy last week about coaches in, in, in football. In college, the teams revolve around the coach. You need a coach that, that runs the team, and the players change every four years or, or whatever. But the coach becomes the hub. In the pros, it's the other way around. The players are the hub because there's so much money wrapped up in them that the coaches are the first one to go. Well, boxing's no different today. Maybe not yesteryear, maybe not you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago. But today, when a fighter comes out and is signed for big money, you know, guess what? They're protecting him. And the, the coach, or in this case, the trainer, they're the first ones to go and get all the blame. Teddy is a control freak. He wants to be in charge. He needs to control the amateurs. His teams, will, his, his, teams his, his fighters will come and go. But Teddy should be the hub. It's my opinion. You know, and, and I don't mean it in a, in a negative way. Yeah, I'm saying it. I'm saying that I don't like sometimes uh, Teddy's uh, ways and stuff like that. And I don't always agree with him, but I don't always disagree with him. But I'm giving credit where credit's due. Teddy Atlas could save the United States boxing program. As far as a pro, he does nothing for us. Talking boxing with Billy C. Every week, two hours of the best boxing talk on the radio. Mike Tyson looked like he put on some pounds. He was fat. He went into McDonald's and he just said to them, hey, give me six of everything on the menu. He put on two watches and covered two time zones. I'm talking fat here. He got on a scale the other day and it said, come on, one of you guys got to get off. Last thing I heard is that he jumped into the ocean and he left a ring around the continent. <laughs> He's talking. fat. Boxing with Billy C. Time for another major in golf. This time it's across the pond for the Open Championship. What's at stake? That's next on Sports Shorts with me, the Sports Princess. Want to put some wild into your weekend? Come to the all-new Mesquite Pro Rodeo. Corral seats start at just $12, and kids are always half price. Get your tickets at Kroger and save $5. This weekend, meet the rodeo legends. Tractor Supply sponsors the Neil Gay Cowboy Reunion. The city ends and the Wild West begins at cool air-conditioned Mesquite Arena. I-635 and exit 4, 730 Friday and Saturday. Mesquite is the official rodeo capital of Texas. Filled with tricky pot bunkers that you have to climb into, no less, this year's Open at Royal Litham and St. Anne's in England is certain to be tough, even for the most seasoned professional golfer. Tiger Woods, who hasn't won a major in four years, is looking to pick up his 15th career title. The last American to win at Royal Litham was David Duvall in 2001. Should Woods win, it would be his fourth Open, the last back in 2006. The Americans and the Europeans and everybody else in between know that this is no walk in the park. And with rain expected, they'll need more than umbrellas and a good caddy to navigate this 7,086-yard course that rewards great ball striking and punishes the rest. Whoever wins the Claret Jug will no doubt be playing some target golf at this major. I'm the Sports Princess with Sports Shorts. Now back to talking Boxing with Billy C. He may not have an excellence in broadcasting award, but the night's still young. And he's got martinis. So you never know what may be by morning. By morning. It's talking Boxing with Billy C. Talking Boxing with Billy C. The one, the only, Don King. Makes me feel good, Billy, to have you, the number one show in the country, talking Boxing with Billy. So I invite each and every American that's listening to this great show to tune in. This, we want you to be there with Billy and me. Down 
And uh, we're back. You're listening to the Talking Boxing with Billy C. Show. And you're watching us on the Fight Now television channel. Don't forget, every night it's Fight Night on Fight Now, 10 p.m. Eastern. You can check out a new fight every night, 10 p.m. Eastern. For the uh, latest and greatest, just check out their website, www.fightnow.com. And uh, by the way, pick up the phone and call your local television provider. Whether it's satellite dish or cable, tell them I want to see the talking boxing with Billy C show on Fight Now right now. Give it to me, baby, and they will. It's that simple. All the information about the channel can be found on their website www.fightnow.com. Um, yeah, you know I'm getting a couple of comments in uh, in the chat room. You know, Freddie, uh, I, I think that's a good move for Freddie, man. You guys think so too, huh? You know. I think so, but uh, I, I think uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, I think that that would be uh, a, a good move for him. I think he would love to control, and uh, I think that uh, uh, he would uh, he would do well. He would do well. We need we need a drastic change. I think the the you know the the promotional aspect would be good. You know, he's a known guy and everything else. But uh, anyway, um. We've got some fights we're going to be breaking down. Now, here's the thing. The Billy C. Challenge is back. That's right. We want you to get involved with the Billy C. Challenge. And uh, it's very simple. All you got to do is pick the fights, man. We're going to pick out the fights, and you pick them. If you get the best winning percentage for the month, you get a prize. You get a prize. We ship you prizes. And then uh, here's the best part. If you get the best winning percentage over the rest of the year, and, you know, we usually do it for, for the full year, but because we, uh, you know, because Simon Barsinista, you know, dropped off the face of the earth, uh, we had to redo this whole thing. Um, at the end of the year, you'll get a, a huge prize package. It consists of T-shirts and books and all kinds of other stuff, tickets. Uh, so, you know, it, it pays uh, to get involved and to get, as many of these uh, correct as you can. And uh, now's the time to start it. But since we kicked it off officially for this week, uh, there's, uh, I uncovered an error in the code that my man's going to have to fix. So for this week, I want you to do this. I want you to email me your picks. Billy at Talkin' Boxing, T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G dot com. And uh, make sure you uh, include your email address. I will register your email within the program, so as soon as next week's picks are, are put out, you will get an email with those picks. And then you go up on the site, and you choose them. And you'll win the prize if you're the, if you're the best one. So email me, Billy, at TalkinBoxing.com. That's T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G.com. But, uh, you know, hey, you know, see who, uh, see who uh, can, can beat me, you know? I mean, come on. I had a pretty good winning percentage going into it. I, I know Murphy's glad we started over because he was down at the bottom of the list. But I know one guy I'm going to miss, and that's my man David Allen, that's for sure. Um, two fights that you may want to watch, or three fights you may want to watch this weekend that are not on our pick list. Robin Reed against William Gary. Uh, it's for the uh, World uh, Super Middleweight title, the WBF World Super Middleweight title. Uh, that uh, should still be on. I haven't heard much about it, but uh, uh, another uh, good WBF belt uh, on the line. In Chicago, um, I believe uh, tomorrow, uh, the return of Frez Oquendo, and uh, they finally named an opponent for him uh, at the beginning of this week. And, uh, you know, he's uh, not a bad guy uh, anyway, uh, but uh, uh, he's going to be... Uh, I forget who it was. It was a, a decent fighter, and, and I don't have it in front of me. But uh, Fred Zaquendo, maybe Murphy can help me out. Fred Zaquendo is fighting this weekend at the Horseshoe uh, Casino in Hammond, Indiana. And uh, Brian Minto, yeah, him, um, Brian Minto, he returns uh, to the ring Saturday. He's going to be taking on uh, Mike Shepard, which isn't a bad little matchup. A little, it's not a bad little matchup. Shepard's 20 and 13. Brian the Beast, he goes back and forth between Cruiser and, uh, right, Robert Hawkins. I, I knew, I, I, it was at the tip of my tongue, Coach K saves the day. Ooh, that, that's a rhyme. I, uh, 
coined that phrase. Coach K saves the day. And by the way, Coach, uh, we'll be sending your prize. He's the winner of uh, uh, one of the, one of the uh, uh, trivias this week, and he's getting a, a book that he doesn't have, a Holyfield book, right? I think that's the one on the list that's going out today. Um, but uh, anyway, okay, let's get into the picks. Uh, uh, first and foremost, the uh, first p- fight I'm going to pick is for the uh, WBF uh, World Welterweight title. And it's between Jose Lopez and Jose Emilio Pereira. Pereira's got a record of 21 wins, 13 come by knockout. And he does have one loss. He's 29 years old. He's got a, uh, 102 rounds as a professional with a 59% knockout ratio. When you look at this guy's record, He's picked up a couple of these belts along the way, like the F- uh, uh, Fico Box or Feet Car or whatever. You know, it's a, whatever the hell those letters stand for. But that was in the lightweight division. He's moving up, uh, and now he's in the uh, welterweight division. You know, when you look at this guy, he's got one loss. That was his last fight against a 6-1 and one guy, Danny Escobar, in Tijuana, Mexico. Um, but when you look at the rest of the, the, his level of opposition, they've been okay. He's fought his whole career in Mexico. Um, you know, not much about him. He's got an impressive record. Like I said, 21 wins, 13 by knockout, one loss. Now he steps in with Jose Lopez, who's uh, younger than him, 21 years old. Um, bigger than him, technically. Uh, he's been fighting at uh, junior welterweight and now uh, oh, welterweight. He's got 16 wins, two losses. Ten of his W's come by knockout. He's got a draw now. He lost uh, uh, a fight to a pretty decent fighter in Johnny Navarretti. And Johnny Navarrete, uh, or Navarretti, however you want to do it, he lost a very close eight-round decision with him. Now, when you look at this guy's uh, resume, uh, you see uh, a lot tougher opposition. Uh, but he, too, uh, fought uh, predominantly uh, uh, in Mexico. Um, you know, I, this is a tough one for me to pick. Uh, he's got uh, 99 rounds as a pro with a 53% knockout ratio. Um, his, uh, one of his losses came at the hands. I told you the, the one loss was Johnny Nevet, And the other one, uh, came at the hands of, uh, Victor Postal, who was, a uh, a, uh, 17-0 fighter. He fought him in the Ukraine. Uh, he's fairly busy by today's standards. Uh, last year he fought uh, an awful lot, uh, about seven times, eight times. This year in 2012, he's also fought, he's already fought three times, uh, two wins and a loss. Uh, when you look over at, uh, Pereira, uh, he's only fought uh, uh, twice in 2011 and uh, n- not at all this year. So uh, the bottom line is I- I'm kind of in agreement with Marty on this one. Uh, I'm taking uh, Jose Lopez uh, to win uh, to win this fight. Um, you know, uh, I- I- that's who I'm picking, man, Jose Lopez. So even though the other guy's got the uh, uh, more impressive uh, record, I'm picking Jose Lopez. The next fight we're picking is probably the fight of the weekend. Jonathan Barros against Juan Carlos Salgado. Um, it's for the uh, title, for the IBF uh, Super Featherweight title, which is uh, uh, currently Juan Carlos Salgado. He steps in with uh, Jonathan Victor Barros, who's a former world featherweight champion. We all know that. He's not that old. You know, he's been around a long time, but he's only 28. 34 wins, 18 of those W's coming by knockout. He's got two losses, never been stopped. He's got a draw. Uh, he's got 210 rounds as a pro with a 49% uh, knockout ratio. 210 rounds already at 28 years old. Uh, his last three fights, two wins and a loss. Uh, his last fight uh, was a 10-round decision over uh, Gustavo uh, David Bermundez. And uh, before that, he lost a 12-round decision uh, and a shot at the world featherweight title against Celestino Caballero. Um, he had beaten Celestino Caballero to win the title. Uh, the fight before that uh, in July of 2011 and uh, uh, lost his title with, in the rematch in uh, uh, October of the same year. Uh, he also uh, fought and won uh, the title uh, against uh, Irving Berry when it was vacant. That was the WBA belt. Uh, Miguel Roman, he defended it successfully, lost it to Celestino Caballero. I mean, uh, beat Celestino Caballero uh, in the first fight. They got a rematch, and that's when he lost his belt. Uh, He followed that up with the win uh, in June, and now he steps in with another titleist, this time the IBF super featherweight champion, Juan Carlos Salgado. Salgado's got a record of 25 wins, 16 come by knockout. He's got one loss, and it was a knockout loss. But who did it come to by? Uh, uh, Takakasha Uchimaya uh, from Japan, and uh, that was his shot at uh, the uh, uh, world title at that time. 
Uh, now, he did beat Jorge Linares, remember? He knocked out Jorge Linares uh, in uh, the first round to win the Super Featherweight title, the WBA. He lost it uh, in a 12th round against Uchimaya. Uh He got back on track, uh, won uh, two back-to-back fights against Guadalupe Rosales, and then got a shot at Arginus Mendez uh, for the vacant IBF uh, Super Featherweight uh, title in 2011. He made two successful defenses, one against Miguel Beltran Jr., who just put on a great show on ESPN. Uh, that, that fight actually ended in a no contest because of a cut. Uh, but then he had a successful defense against Martin Herrero uh, this year in April. And uh, now he's putting his title on the line uh, against a very tough Jonathan Barros. Um, John, Juan Carlos Salgado has got uh, uh, 144 rounds as a pro with a 59% a knockout ratio. He's five foot nine with a 69 and a half inch reach. Uh, I'm picking uh, Selgado in this fight. I think it's going to be very close. I think it's going to be very close, but I'm leaning towards Selgado. Uh, I think Marty made a good point. Selgado's 27, and uh, Jonathan Barros um, is uh, 28 years old, and uh, he's got a lot more. Uh, he's got a lot more mileage for a 28 year old. So, uh, but hey, it could go uh, either way. I, I like. Uh, I like it though. I like uh, uh, Selgado in this one. All right, the next one I'm picking is the co-main event on the Telefutura broadcast, uh, Rancis Bartholomew against Alejandro Rodriguez. Alejandro Rodriguez uh, is uh, 24 years old, and um, he's got a record of 14 wins, six losses, seven of his uh, wins coming by knockout. Of his six losses, he was stopped three times. His last uh, three fights, one win, two losses, including his very last fight uh, when he stopped in with uh, Andre Akilimov. Uh, and was knocked out in the 10th round. He's 24 years old with 113 rounds as a professional with a 35% uh, knockout ratio. He did get a shot at the U.S. NBC lightweight title against John Molina back in 2011 and was stopped in three. He also lost a 10-round decision for the NABO Super Featherweight title against Eloy Perez. Uh, other than that, when he steps up his uh, uh, level of opposition, he doesn't finish off too well, uh, but uh, when he's fighting lesser opposition, uh, he comes out on top. Now, he's definitely not fighting lesser opposition against Kid Blast Barthelemy. He's undefeated, 16-0, and 11 knockouts. Uh, like I said, no losses. Uh, he's 26 years old, 5'11", 51 rounds as a professional with a 69% knockout ratio. This kid is uh, moving along very rapidly. Uh, one of the Cuban defectors uh, uh, did not have uh, uh, an easy road since he's uh, uh, turned pro uh, back in 2009. He's got some good wins under his belt as well. Uh, Alejandro Barrera, uh, Rennell Griffith, uh, he won. James Hope is a guy that uh, uh, you might look at his uh, record and, and say, oh, he's not that good. But th- this kid can fight. I- I've seen him fight a couple of times. Uh, his last win, uh, last two wins, Highland, Highland Williams Jr., uh, he uh, beat in an eight-round decision in uh, February of this year. And uh, in, in May of this year, Robert uh, Osaby. Uh, beat him in an eight-round decision. And uh, I'm putting my money on Rancis Bartholomew to continue his winning ways. And, uh, you know, not that it matters, but I, I have a feeling he's going to stop Rodriguez uh, pretty pretty impressively. I'm picking Rancis Bartholomew uh, in that one. The main event of the Telefutura uh, broadcast is, of course, uh, Brenda's Prescott against Francisco Gato Figueroa. Uh, Gato Figueroa. He's got a record of 20 wins, 13 come by knockout. He's got four losses, only stopped that one time, uh, but it was a devastating knockout to Randall Bailey. I thought he killed my man Gatto. He does have a draw. He's 34 years old, 66-inch reach, five foot six in height, 150 rounds as a pro with a 52% knockout ratio. His last three fights, two losses and a draw. He lost to Alex Perez, who's undefeated in New York, 15-0. Uh, and 0. Rashid Holloway, he got a draw, a majority draw, uh, and that was uh, an 11 to 1 fighter. And of course, the uh, Randall Bailey devastating knockout, which, uh, uh, you know, he uh, got stopped in the fourth round of that one. It was looking good up to that point. Uh, prior to that, he, he had some good wins against decent fighters. Johnny Joey Rios was a huge win. Joey Rios was undefeated at the time, had a big following back in the uh, uh, mid uh, 2000s. Um, Antonio Ramirez, he had a win over. Olivia Julio. Or Obaldo Hernandez. I mean, some good wins. The kid can fight. The question is, is he ready? Now, he did fight already in March against Perez. Lost a 10-round decision. Uh, really, uh, uh, since the stoppage, he's gone 16 rounds. Uh, so you would have to assume he's in shape. Um, 
you know, Marty thinks he's doing it for the money. Very well could be. He steps in with Brennan Prescott, who's got a record of 25 wins, four losses, 20 of his wins coming by knockout. We all know his most famous knockout was a first-round annihilation of Amir Khan back in 2008. But since then, uh, he's actually lost all of his fights. Um, I mean, he's lost all of his fights that he lost. He's got four losses. He lost all four after uh, the Amir Khan win. Uh, he's got a split decision loss to uh, Miguel Vasquez. He's got a 12-round decision loss to Kevin Mitchell. He's got a 12-round uh, decision loss to Paul McCluskey. And he's got a 10th-round knockout loss to Mike Alvarado that we all saw Mike Alvarado come back and uh, win that one uh, in uh, devastating fashion. So, um, you know, my hang-up with uh, Brennan Prescott, who's... Uh, uh, I told you 25 and 4, 144 rounds as a pro, 69% knockout ratio, 72 inch reach, 5 foot 11. Uh, my hang up with him is that he's very one dimensional, but he can bang, and he did show that uh, he had uh, 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 some uh, some freakish power. Uh, you know, I wanted to uh, I wanted to give uh, Francisco uh, Figueroa, my man, uh, the benefit of the doubt. Um, and, and pick him, but I, I just can't. I think that the height difference is too much, and uh, like Marty, I, I think that uh, Gato is, is uh, got to make some money. Uh, I'm taking, uh, I'm taking uh, Brennan Prescott in this one uh, for an important fight that's going to probably catapult him uh, to, a, uh, to a title shot. In the, um, that's the main event on Telefutura. The co-main event on ESPN's Fights Tonight is Donovan Da Bomb George, my man Murphy's favorite fighter, uh, and he's going up against uh, Dianzo Miranda. And Dianzo Miranda uh, is a tough kid. But when he steps up for uh, uh, his level of opposition, doesn't fare too well. Now, he's a former world title challenger. He's got a record of 21 wins, 7 losses. And of those uh, 21 wins, he got 18 knockouts. Of those 7 losses, he was stopped 6 times. He's got a couple of draws. He's um, got a six, he's 76-inch reach. He's six foot one in height. 132 rounds as a pro with a 60% knockout ratio. Uh, his last four fights, he's got one win, three losses, all losses by knockout. He lost to uh, uh, Avitandli Kurtzia in his uh, last fight, which was for the IBO World title in the middleweight division. Uh, was stopped in one round very quickly. Uh, he also uh, beat Luan Simon, who's not very good. Um, he lost to uh, Reen and St. Justice in Canada was stopped in the ninth, and he was stopped in the tenth round by Roman Carmazan. Made in hell, Carmazan. Um, when he stepped up to fight other guys like Kid Chocolate and Giovanni Lorenzo, hasn't uh, fared too well. He steps in with uh, Donovan Da Bomb George from Chicago. 93 rounds as a pro with a 76% knockout ratio. He's six foot tall with 70 inch reach. He's got 22 wins, 19 come by knockout. He has two losses, never been stopped, and he's got a draw. In his two losses, it includes the last one, Edwin La Bamba Rodriguez, who I thought was uh, it was a lot closer than the scores indicated, but I felt that Rodriguez won the fight. I thought Donovan George came on. Talk about one-dimensional. Donovan George is one-dimensional. Uh, the only uh, beating he took, really, uh, was uh, uh, in 2010 when Francisco Sierra uh, beat him to a pulp. He was lucky that they stopped it uh, on... Uh, on cuts and had to go to the scorecards. He was bleeding like a stuck pig. Uh, he has gotten some good wins, but when he steps up, he's outboxed. But I don't think it's going to happen tonight. I think that he's going to come out on the winning end. I'm picking the bomb George against Miranda. In the main event, which was supposed to be the co-main event, Damian Frias uh, takes on Carlos Molina. Frias is 19 wins, 10 come by knockout. He's got four losses, never been stopped, and he's got a draw. He's 35 years old. That's right, 35 years old. Or when you get to be my age, I'll say 35 year, years young. He's five foot ten inches tall. He's got 119 rounds as a pro with a 42 percent knockout ratio. Um, he's fought some decent guys, and uh, he's actually beaten some decent guys. He beat uh, Henry Crawford in his last fight, stopped him in nine uh, almost a year ago in September of last year. Um, you know, Daniel Sastry, he uh, got a, door, a draw with, and uh, we saw him recently uh, on, uh, uh, on Friday Night Fights. Brad Solomon, who's uh, uh, up and coming uh, pretty good. He was, he was ranked for a while till he stopped fighting. 
um, welterweight. He uh, went eight rounds with him. So, you know, he is pretty tough. There's no question about that. He steps in with Carlos Molina. We all know Carlos Molina uh, was, uh, was uh, a guy that uh, uh, kind of got robbed in the James Kirkland fight. He was DQ'd in the 10th round to save Kirkland from losing. Uh, he's got 19 wins, six coming by knockout, five losses, never been stopped. He's got a couple of draws. He's 29 years old, 70-inch reach, five foot nine in height, 181 rounds as a pro with a 23% knockout ratio. Um, listen, he's got wins over Kermit Cintron. He's got win, wins over Alan Converse. Uh, Ursulandi Lara he drawed with, a le- legitimate fight there. Um, Danny Perez he beat. Uh, you know, Ed Parodies, Alexis Camacho. I mean, you go down the list, and, and he's fought some tough opposition. Tough, tough opposition. He did have a streak where he lost three in a row, and those three guys were uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Remember, that was a rematch. He drew with Chavez Jr. Uh, the first time, and uh, people think he even won the second time because it was a majority decision. Uh, Waylon Willingham, he lost to, which was a fixed fight, 100%. Another typical New York fight, although it wasn't under the New York State uh, Athletic Commission, but that was a totally fixed fight. And uh, he lost to Mike Alvarado. Then he hadn't lost again since the DQ. I'm picking Carlos Molina in this fight. So my picks for this week are uh, in the uh, in, in the reverse order. We got Carlos Molina over Damian Frias. I'm picking Donovan George over Dionzio Miranda. I'm picking Brennis Prescott over Francisco Figueroa, Rancis Bartholomew over Alejandro Rodriguez, Juan Carlos Salgado over Jonathan Barrios in a 50-50 fight, and uh, Jose Lopez over Jose Emilio Pereira. Those are my picks. Good luck to everybody in the Billy C. Challenge, except for David Murphy. We like to beat up on Murphy, so. You know, he, he gets so mad when, when, you know, he doesn't get one. So I, he, he beats himself up, so I figure I might as well join in on the Reindeer game. So good luck to everybody. Email me your picks this week, and we'll have the program all wrapped up. So Billy at Talking Boxing, T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G dot com. Wake up. It's time for the It's Too Early for a Trivia Question. Question. Do we have a winner? Yeah, we do, and it was a tough question. But first, today's It's Too Early for a Trivia Question question is being brought to us by Gleason's Gym. Check it out, www.billycboxing.com, and uh, click the uh, Gleason's Bin Gym banner. Don't forget about uh, the uh, Boxing Fantasy Camp. Give them a call. Demand the uh, Billy C. discount. You could get squeezed in if you still want to, 718 797 Two eight seven two. That's seven one eight seven nine seven two eight seven two. Gleason's Gym. Make sure you tell him Billy C sent you. All right. Yesterday's trivia question um, was uh, simply this. It said, by nineteen thirty two, uh, boxing in one form or another was legal in all forty eight states except for one. Which one was it? Well, the winner of this is actually one of my favorite uh, people. One of my favorite listeners. Um, I will tell everyone that she, yes, she, um, must have sent 46 states uh, to me. So she eventually got it right. But the truth of the matter is, it was her second guess. She didn't even realize she got it right. But our girl Kaylee, who's in the chat room right now, knew that Texas was the only state that... uh, um, did not uh, have boxing legal. Texas was the only one. It uh, Several others permitted fights under the private club's uh, rules, which they had to be exib- exhibitions. But the state of Texas was the only state by 1932 that you were not allowed to box in any way, shape, or form. Congratulations to Kaylee. She's won the uh, copy of the uh, Black Lights book uh, written by Thomas Hauser, courtesy of prizefightingbooks.com. We'll send that out to her. Uh, it is written uh, primarily about one of uh, my close friends, Billy Costello, who we lost uh, uh, last year. And uh, I'm, I'm actually glad Kaylee got this book because uh, uh, she'll get to learn a little about uh, my man, Billy Costello. So congratulations uh, to Kaylee. Now, I got another copy of the Burke Gilroy book. Uh, Gilroy was here. We, uh, it, was a, it was a great read. Um, this one uh, also courtesy of prizefightingbooks.com. 
is on the line for today's It's Too Early for a Trivia Question question. And it is, um, uh, who was the first former junior welterweight champion to referee a junior welterweight world championship fight? Who was the first former junior welterweight champion to referee a junior welterweight world championship fight? If you know this answer, email me, Billy at Talkin' Boxing. That's T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G dot com. Who was the first former junior welterweight champ to referee a junior welterweight world championship? If you know that answer and you're the first one, you'll get the Gilroy book. Email me, Billy at Talkin' Boxing, T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G dot com. This day in boxing history. And finally, this day in boxing history is being brought to us by Campanero and Tomkovich. If you're looking for a lawyer, use the ones that keep my ass out of trouble. That is Campanero and Tomkovich. Give them a call today, 845-221-4099. Tell them Billy C. sent you, and I'll pick up the consultation fee. That's 845-221-4099. Let Campanero and Tomkovich knock out your legal problem. 845 845- Two two one four zero nine nine. On this day, August seventeenth in nineteen ninety, Loretto Garza wins a twelve round decision over Juan Cagi to win the the WBA World Junior Welterweight title, and that took place on this day, August seventeenth in nineteen ninety, in Nice, France. Hey man, that concludes our show for the uh, week today and the week. So uh, make sure you tune in uh, uh, Monday morning. And I want everybody to enjoy the fights this week. But, you know, as usual, I got one thing to say. Make sure you tune in Monday morning. Same bat time. Same bat channel. There's only one channel. It's the Fight Now channel. Call your local television provider right now and tell them you want the Fight Now channel later to your sports channel line. If it's that simple, for all the information about the channel, you can find it on their website, www.fightnow.com. See you all Monday. Ciao, baby. <laughs>